How's it going, everyone? Today's topic, I wanted to go in full detail uh, what you must understand about GLWB riders or Guaranteed Lifetime Withdrawal Benefit riders and go over the pros, but more importantly, go over the cons. This sort of concept, it's a basically an additional feature that an individual could leverage with an annuity, with a fixed annuity, a fixed index annuity, or a variable annuity that could produce a lifetime income while their physical money is still growing in some way so that whenever they pass away, if they pass away prematurely and they're still an account balance sitting there, that could be left over to their beneficiaries. So the most important question you should be asking yourself is, what problem am I trying to solve? if I'm interested in getting set up with an annuity that has an income rider. And, you know, if there's no problem there, meaning that if you're trying to look to leverage an annuity for income, but you don't have a specific income gap or you don't have a specific income need, then you probably should not try to go towards this mechanism. I'm going to really uncover, you know, some of the negatives with these things. But, you know, case in point is if you know that you have a problem and you need to solve that problem, What's the way, what's the best mathematical way that you could choose the top carrier based on your age, based on your time horizon, based on how long you have to receive income for, based on whether you want to have income for the rest of your life, for yours and your spouse's life? All these different factors come into play. So, at, you know, the, the most important question before even getting started on any bit of this path, before you start getting, you know, tripped up on, up, oh, I'm getting a 7% guarantee over here or a 10% guarantee over there, which is something known as the roll-up rate on an income rider, which I'll explain, do you actually have a problem there? Because if you're receiving pension income, if you're receiving Social Security income, if you're receiving income from different assets, and that income is significantly greater than or equal to what your expenses are, well, then maybe you might not want to look at an annuity or an annuity with an income rider to further go down this road. Uh, and it could save you a lot of trouble. It could save you a lot of money of, of throwing thousands of dollars in the wrong direction. So, you know, what do I mean by that? Really, what is a GLWB or Guaranteed Lifetime Withdrawal Benefit Rider? Like, what is the basic components of it? And simply put, a GLWB Rider is an add-on that allows you to trigger lifetime income from an annuity without surrendering control. So with old-fashioned annuities, an individual would go to an insurance company, say, I have X amount of dollars, and I want to make sure that I, I could receive back some sort of lifetime income stream that I cannot outlive. And that's known as annuitization. And you still have those sorts of annuities that, that are still available. You have uh, SPIA, single premium immediate annuities. You have DIAs, deferred income annuities. And ultimately what's happening is you're losing control. You're saying, I'm giving this money to an insurance company. Insurance company is going to pay me back my money with interest. And they're going to have some sort of guarantee that I cannot outlive this dollars. A, a GLWB rider, what it does is it allows you to have the growth mechanism of an annuity account, meaning that you're not surrendering full control over to the insurance company, but you're utilizing the insurance company for that lifetime income play. So the example, really quick example of this was, let's say if you have $100,000 and you're 60 years old and you want to place your monies into a deferred income annuity, a DIA with annuitization. And maybe by waiting five years at age 65, the insurance company says, okay, we're going to pay you $6,000 every single year to the day you pass away. So you look at this, say, okay, this is $100,000. If I was to try to invest it on my own, you know, when I was to turn on income of $6,000 at age 65, you know, I, I feel like I'm a little bit nervous. Maybe I can't, I, I'm going to outlive these monies. If I live past 75, past 80, past 90 years old, I would have ran this well dry. So I want to go and take that risk off of my plate, place it on the insurance company's plate. That's completely fine. The downside with that is, let's say if you triggered at age 65 and all of a sudden you're living for a couple of years and you pass away, you would have only been getting paid that $6,000 cash flow for those couple of years. You pass away, nothing gets left over to your beneficiaries. That's annuitization. You lost all of that control. What an income rider does, and these really came out in the early 2000s, so this wasn't something that came out in like the 70s, the 80s, nothing like that. came out in early 2000s. You had variable annuities were the first to create it, and then you had fixed and fixed index annuities basically stole the idea. Really, the sweet spot is hybrid annuities with fixed index annuities with income riders. And what I mean by that is, let's say if you have the 100000 you say, okay, I'm going to go and, and I want to have more flexibility on my control. I'll go give 100000 to the top carrier with a five-year deferral and trigger income through the income rider. So maybe with that example, instead of getting paid $6,000 of losing control, you could, at age 65, you could get $8,000 of lifetime income and still have control. 
So what that says is, let's say if you're living, you're living, you're living, you're getting paid 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000. All of a sudden you pass away. If there's still an account balance sitting there, that will get left over to your beneficiaries. If let's say you're in it for five years, seven years, 10 years, based on however long the restricted duration is, you can even have access to take the monies and walk away if let's say interest rate environment is significantly higher at that point, where there's something else that comes out that's significantly better at that point. So from one aspect, you always want to make sure that you're leveraging it for the max cash flow need. Which one's going to give you the most amount of dollars in your pocket from a lifetime income cash flow perspective for either your life or yours and your spouse's life? So in the example that you're getting paid $8,000, $8,000, $8,000, if let's say you and you get a you know joint lifetime income uh, rider as an example, um, you could have it where let's say you guys live until your 80s, your 90s, your 100s, or one of your, you know, one of the spouses basically keeps living while one spouse, while the, uh, the one spouse passed away. The insurance company is still on the hook to keep paying you income, income, income. So even if your account value is sitting at zero dollars and it's been sitting at zero dollars for 10, 20 plus years, the insurance company is still on the hook to keep paying you, paying you, paying you. So that's why by finding out the sweet spot, some carriers are going to be really good for you know, a male in a specific state that's age 62 that's waiting three years to trigger lifetime income versus another one might be the best for a female age 60 waiting seven years to trigger lifetime income. That's where you want to leverage the different companies and the different offerings against each other so that you know if I have a dollar that I'm placing with one of these accounts, I want to make sure it's going to give me the best mathematical move. I'm not just going to go to the guy up the road that says, oh, okay, you know, it sounds great in theory. I'm giving him money. I'm giving the insurance company money and they're paying me back lifetime income. Well, if you have one count with, let's say you use $100,000, if you have with company ABC, they're paying you $5,000 of cash flow versus another company, the top company is paying you $12,000 of cash flow. You're shooting yourself in the foot. You're, you're, you're losing out to all those restrictions and you're losing out to what you could receive from a max cash flow need by going with the superior option. So I hope that that makes sense. Now, the different accounts that you could utilize for this are traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, non-qualified accounts. And that just means the way that they're taxed. So you could have like 401k dollars, roll it over to IRAs or traditional IRAs and have portions of that IRA get set up with these sorts of annuities with income riders. So you could go in and make sure that you're creating an actual plan, an actual strategy to accomplish what your problem is, to fix what your problem is. Same thing with Roth. You could have monies come to you lifetime income on a tax-free basis through Roth or non-qualified, meaning the cost basis would be tax-free. Anything above the cost basis would be uh, taxable. So, you know, that that's a different sort of, you know, situation, but be mindful that you could set them up. You don't just have to set them up with IRAs or, or Roth IRAs or non-qualified accounts. You could actually use any of those three combinations to create these sorts of accounts. So the benefits that I already touched up on is that it's going to produce you lifetime income in retirement. So what you're doing is you're taking the risk off of yourself and off of your books and you're placing it with an insurance company that has the law of large numbers on their side. They understand their mortality tables. They understand the actuarial data to say, okay, this is how long we, we, you know, suspect somebody to live till. We're going to go and make an offering of this, this, and this. So that's what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I have this lump sum. I, my biggest fear is that I'm going to outlive my retirement savings when I'm in my seventies, when I'm in my eighties. I do not want to invest this in the market. I just want to have a bird in the hand. I want to make sure that if I'm giving these dollars, if I wait X amount of time frame, one year, three years, whatever that is, it could even be immediate income that you're triggering that, that, you know, the income rider, the, the GLWB income rider, and that's cash flow that's constantly coming to you. So you have that peace of mind. It doesn't matter if the market's going up or down, your income will still be coming to you. And that's why it's, it's really set up. It's really meant for more of that risk averse investor, not the individuals that says, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I want to, you know, really, uh, you know, swing for the fences. And I, I really am banking that the market's going to be doing well. This is something that's taking away that risk. There are ways on how you could obviously have growth onto these accounts, but just from a pure, hey, I want to receive lifetime income and, and try to create a type of personal pension aspect, that's where these these things come in and that's where you know the GLWB riders are very favorable for an individual situation. Uh, so it's giving you protection that you will not outlive your money. Also, it helps you close your income gap. So this is where there's a common mistake is an individual, let's say that they're receiving pension income and social security income, and that's you know equating to $60,000. But after doing budgeting analysis, we understand that they need $80,000 of lifetime income throughout retirement. There's a $20,000 gap there. If let's say they have different assets of 401ks, IRAs, Roth, you know, cash accounts, whatever that is, of over a million dollars, well, they don't have to go and shove that full million dollars into one of these plans. 
all they have to do is take whatever the, the smallest portion is and only as much as necessary into the top option to trigger that lifetime income stream. So in that example, if we understand there's a $20,000 cash flow gap, maybe that's going to require 300000 from a portion of their accounts to place it into one of these, trigger the income stream, and now they have that uh, you know over 700000 that now they could utilize for some sort of legacy play, growth play ancillary need, healthcare need, long-term care related need, investment growth uh, strategy, vacation need, whatever that case is, whatever they see as their ideal retirement. So these could be used as very effective tools, but once again, you want to avoid common mistakes. I could also fund the legacy plan. Let's say if somebody wants to go and, and purchase life insurance because they understand that life insurance is um, could be very beneficial to leave as a legacy plan. So they're going to go and, and place, you know, $10,000 per year into a life insurance policy. And that's going to equal $500,000 of a death benefit, as an example, for a, for a life insurance, meaning that this person passes away whenever they pass away, $500,000 is going to go to their beneficiaries. Well, in order to generate that income, they might want to take a portion of dollars, still conceptually think of it like a, like an income gap, but place the smallest dollars only as much as necessary into one of these product lines trigger the income stream and have that income stream pay for the life insurance. So what's happening is the income's always coming to the individual as they're living and that individual's always paying for the life insurance policy as they're living. Once that person passes away, obviously there's no more premium left for the life insurance and that, that death benefit instantly gets paid out. But by utilizing this in the correct way, if that person passes away prematurely, the beneficiaries would receive the tax-free death benefit from the life insurance and then whatever's the remaining account balance from the annuity with the GLWB rider. So you could kind of have a double dip type situation. Also, you could utilize for the legacy plan. Uh, you could utilize that for like long-term care related needs. So even if, let's say you don't have a need for life insurance, but you have a need for, hey, if I'm gonna live a long life, I wanna make sure that I have some sort of long-term care protection. That's how you could go and create these little slivers, these little pockets of not just a true long-term care policy, but like a life insurance long-term care hybrid, or a um, you could have a, a like a doubler on your GLWB rider that could, that could double your income in case of a long-term care uh, type scenario. So there's a lot of really good uses that, that you could accomplish your goal and really, uh, you know, solve your problem uh, you know, throughout retirement, throughout your retirement planning process. So now we're going to really focus time on the cons because this is super, super important to understand. Whenever you see an income rider, this is the most common nine times out of 10 individuals and even advisors don't understand this. The roll up rate is not the same as a guaranteed rate of return. And what I mean by that is you could have a company that says, okay, we're going to go and give you an income rider. And that income rider is going to roll up by 10% simple interest every single year. And then when you're ready to trigger lifetime income, you're going to see an income benefit base versus the account value. The roll-up is not real money. At the end of the day, what makes a good GLWB rider or income rider in general versus a shitty one is how much income are you going to get at the time that you need it? So if you have one company that's giving you a 10% roll-up rate while another company is giving you a 6% roll-up rate, which one's better? Well, it depends. It depends on what the payout percentage is at the time when the person's going to trigger it. So if let's say at age 65, the one that has the 10% roll up has a 4% payout percentage versus the other one has a 7% payout percentage, the combination of the income base multiplied by the payout percentage is going to equal the lifetime income amount. So even though it looks like a larger number on the surface, that's more of the smoke and mirrors that the insurance company was trying to play that game to make it sound more powerful than in reality, you're actually getting less cash flow than something that had a smaller roll up rate. So you want to be very careful with that because you could waste thousands of dollars in the wrong direction, thinking that you were in a more powerful product. And then at the end of the day, it was screwing you over. And once you realize that you do have the most powerful product, it all goes about, or really the, the concept or the strategy should be backing up into the math figuring out what that gap is, figuring out, okay, I don't want to go and invest this money in the market and hope, have hopium that the market's going to be good enough that I'm going to be able to pull out X amount of dollars of cash flow. I want to have some sort of security. I want to have some sort of insurance that I'm going to be receiving this lifetime income stream every single year, every single month to the day that I pass away, just like a pension plan. That's where you would utilize this. But you don't want to throw too many dollars into it if it's not necessary. You want to just match it up to whatever the cash flow need is. And that's something that we do very well, uh, that we do what I want to say better than other advisory groups all across the country is because we deal with these so many times and we're able to distinguish which one is a good one, which one is a bad one, or really just what is the top option. Even if you're looking at the top three options and you might have 900 plus different opportunities, different options available to you, 
the difference between first place and third place could be extreme. It could be the difference of you placing in 300,000 into one of these accounts versus 500,000 into one of these accounts. So that's why the number one option or the number two option, those are always significantly better than what would be fourth place, fifth place, seventh place. Even though it sounds like, okay, well, there's 900 options, you know, top 10 should be pretty good. No, at the end of the day, place in the smallest dollars and only as much as necessary into this plan. And that's a common mistake. It's individuals, they get hung up too much on the roll-up rate. They get hung up thinking, okay, what's well, giving me lifetime income? How, you know, how much different could it be from the top option? And they do not take that time. By not taking that time, they're wasting thousands and thousands of dollars in the wrong direction where those thousands of dollars could be placed in your pocket. Those thousands of dollars could be utilized towards more fun things that you want to see throughout your ideal retirement scenario and, uh, you know, have, have create less problems for you and, and more solutions for you. Also be mindful that you could have expensive riders on there. If you have a very powerful income rider and you're using it for the purposes of income and, you know, one rider might be 1% versus another rider might be, you know, 0.90%, 0 .90%, 90 basis points, that's not going to be that much of a difference, especially because it's giving you the cash flow. But if you have something that's giving you an inferior cash flow and then on top of it, it's a 3% fee versus one that's giving you a more powerful cash flow and it's a 1% fee, that's obviously a problem from two angles. One, they're not paying you enough income. And then two, they're screwing you over because they're tripling up the amount of fees on it. And that's why I hate variable annuities. Variable annuities are notorious for having a shitty guaranteed cash flow and extremely high fees and large downward market risk associated with it. So obviously, if you have any questions regarding if you got suckered into a variable annuity with an income rider and you need help to figure out, you know, should you stay put or how to make sure that you're reducing those costs, feel free to give our 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. And you can easily reference this video or you could go and schedule a, an appointment through the calendar link that's embedded in the description of this video. So we understand, you know, what is a GLWB rider, guaranteed lifetime withdrawal benefit rider? What is an income rider on an annuity? What are the pros? What are the cons? Now, what are some solutions? How can you make sure that you're you're setting this up the right way? You're, you're taking the correct strategic approach to really solve what your problem is. Resolve your retirement income problem. Solve your downward market loss fear, your, your, your risk aversion. You know, how, how exactly can you do this effectively? And it all comes down to math. And what I mean by that is figure out what your expenses are right now. Figure out what your expenses are going to be throughout retirement. See what your income is going to be throughout retirement. And then what's that gap? Is there a gap there between what your guaranteed cash flow is, what your guaranteed income sources are throughout retirement versus what your expenses are? And make sure that you're, you're uh, really dissecting what those expenses are and seeing, okay, is there an inflationary need to this expense? Do I have to have step ups in income? All these different variables are very important when it comes to what's the top solution for you. And you really have two main solutions. You could either do it yourself, try to figure it out, try to see, okay, what's going to be the top carrier for me? And I'm hoping that I'm going to choose the correct option and back up into the math, or you could reach out for help. If you're interested in having a conversation and really doing a full analysis and saying, okay, you know, is this even something I should be looking towards? How exactly should I even figure out what the math is? And then what is the best possible solution that I should be going into? Making sure that I'm saving myself thousands of dollars in the process. That's where you should reach out to us. So you could either give a 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. Or you can schedule a call directly with the uh, calendar link embedded um, in the description of this video. And really what we would do is look at the 30,000 foot view. What is your current point A? Where are you right now? Where's your point B? Where do you want to get to? What's your current situation? And then make sure that we're scheduling things into specific areas. So think of them as individual pieces of a puzzle so that when you're going and you're creating it, it looks like this beautiful masterpiece from that point A to point B. And you're having that confidence knowing that you're leveraging the different insurance companies you're using the correct one that's best for you. And then that really the trick of this is to try to have as much leftover money as possible. If there's ways where you have savings of 500, 600, 700,000, but by utilizing the correct solutions, all you have to do is leverage 100 or 200,000 of that 700,000 marker as an example. Now you have an extra 500, 400,000 in your pocket that you don't have to use for an income need. You've already accomplished your income goal. Now you can say, okay, let me take a sliver of this and create an emergency related strategy. Uh, let me take, uh, you know, uh, the remaining portion of it and try to grow it so that I'm beating out the pace of inflation, that I'm using this as my vacation fund, that I'm using this as my legacy uh, planning need. You know, there's a whole multitude of different things that you could do, but you want to have a strategy, not just hope, not just say, okay, well, you know, I, I got to this point. When you start getting nearing that retirement stage, 
that's where it's more crucial than ever to actually make sure you're, you're creating a plan and creating a strategic approach for what's going to be the best way possible for you. And that's something that we do uh, very well. We help out individuals all throughout the country to really, uh, you know, show them what is the best possible way to solve their problem. And that's where we're offering a 20 minute connection call. It's not a, you know, a, a strategy session. It's not a, uh, okay, we're just going to go and send us a bunch of statements. We want to see what is most important to you. And even if you should graze the surface of leveraging an annuity, or is that just a big waste of time? You might be better off just going and leveraging fixed accounts, utilizing bank CDs, utilizing fixed annuities, and getting just a pure fixed rate of return and living off that interest on that rate of return side, as opposed to utilizing something with an income rider. Income riders could be very powerful. They could be amazing tools, especially for retirement income planning, but you do not want to use it the wrong way. And when I say tool, think about the efficiency of you have to hammer in a nail. What's going to be the most effective way to do that? You use a hammer. Can you use the back of a screwdriver? Yes. Is it going to be as efficient or effective as a hammer? Absolutely not. So once again, like, you, should you go and try to take on all this extra risk and be inefficient with your income planning? You can do that, but obviously you, it makes mathematical sense. It makes generic sense to use the best possible tool that will get you there faster with the cheapest possible cost. Um, so once again, it's a connection call. If you are interested, give her 1-800 number call 1-800-566-1002. Or you could uh, simply click on the link if you want to you know, schedule it directly with one of our advisors or you want to put in there to schedule it directly with myself. My name is Derek Afasi, owner of Afasi Financial Group. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.